Hello everyone. Today we're going to do something a little different. We are going to be, we're going to install, we're going to do Hello World first, get everything up and running in Visual Studio Code. This is actually a lot easier in regular Visual Studio, but Visual Studio Code is so popular, people love these videos, so we're going to use it this way. So we're going to get a console application up and running, which we've done before, it's not that hard. And then we're going to do something more interesting, and that's we're going to create a JSON file. I'm going to describe to you what that is, and then we're going to serialize it and deserialize it. And we have to talk about what that is because I do this in my work a lot. JSON and XML are very similar. They describe data, they put tags around data, and then it, it's kind of like a text form of data, and then you can pass it along, and then you can turn that same JSON, like say customer data. You might have a first name, last name. You might have many customers. Well, you can put that in JSON, you can push that over the internet, push it into an API, and someone else can take that data and serialize it, deserialize it. And I'm going to show you what that means here in a minute. But, but this very important concept to understand JSON and XML, but we're going to do JSON today. So here we are, and what we need to do, let's create a new folder. We're going to start out with a Hello World application, and once that's running, we're going to do some JSON. As I said, we're going to ser serialize, deserialize, and play with it. And you'll get familiar with that. It's very important in your career that you understand JSON and XML. They're very similar, but we'll get into it here in a second. So I'm going to create a folder called C Sharp. It's just a folder. It's empty right now, right? Now I have to make sure that I'm in that folder. So I'm going to go CD, CS, and then hit the tab key, and it automatically pops up. That's like a Linux thing. It's very nice. Also, if you hit your up arrow key, it'll go back to a previous command. Very, very powerful. Using tab and up key, you can save a lot of time and a lot of typing. So now we're going to do .NET new console. Actually, first of all, let's install that. What we need to do is install an extension that handles C Sharp. And we'll just type in C Sharp. And pretty much the first one that comes up, this 1.23.6, is the one you need. So it asks you if what, well, I don't know why, but your color theme, and you pick that. And you wait, and I think it installed. Yeah, it looks like it did. So here's an, it installed. And this is extension is going to help you with the de debugging. It's going to give you project files, all kind and IntelliSense, and all kinds of stuff. So if you're doing if you're doing Python, you need the Python extension. If you're doing C sharp, you need the C sharp extension. All of this can be done in Visual Studio, not Python. But you could do a lot of this in Visual Studio. Uh, but it, this is a very popular uh, Visual Studio code, and that's why we're doing it here. All right, so let's go back to our folder, our empty folder. I'm gonna, I'll show you this, prove it's empty. Now we're gonna type in .NET new console. This is going to create our project files that .NET needs to run. It's kind of like their configuration. And if you go back up here under your folder, you'll see a CSPROJ file. Now that's very common in Visual Studio and here, but it's a C-sharp project file so if you have to think about it like this, every project are the configurations for the files underneath it. So we have one project here, and it look, this looks like XML, right? Whenever you see these tags. So the configuration for this project is in the csproj file. And that's good to know. Um, also, now we're doing .NET Core, and that's what tells you what it is, what version of the framework is here. Now, you should also know about solution files in .NET and Visual Studio uses SLN files, those are solutions. So a solution file can hold many projects, and projects can hold many files. So usually when you're on a big project, you might have a database project, and a middle tier project, and a front end project, all within the same solution. So that's how it works. SLN are solution, and they hold many projects, and projects hold many files. But anyway, let's go back to what we were doing. So now we want to prove, I'm going to clear this out. We want to prove that this works, and if all we need to do is type .NET run, and we have our hello world here. So all this program did was write hello world. So now we need to install our extension, which I have already done here. We'll go back to our folder up here, and notice here we are with our program. Now, we aren't able to debug it yet. If you come to debug, you'll see that it's telling us to create a launch.json file. So I'm going to click on that, .NET Core, and here it builds the launch.json file. 
Now, we'll talk about that in a second, but notice that there are two entries in here, one, comma, two. And you'll get used to that if you use JSON quite a lot after a while. Whenever you see a bracket, that means there's many to follow. And JSON is very powerful, but this is a good example of how it works. So most often you have a key, key value, key value, key value. So the name and then the value. And this is how it can store and pass information in plain text. And in this case, they're using JSON as a configuration method. And so if you notice, if you come up here and drop this down, you get one item here, and that's this item. Then you get another item here, and that's this item. And if I were to come and let's say I copied this down here, I put a comma here, and I, I gave it a name, X's, long X's like that, just gave it that weird name. And I save it, and I come up here, notice there it is. So if I wanted to have a different type of launch, I could just pull, pick that here and then run it, or pick that here, and it has a different different settings for when you launch, like from different, maybe from different folders, different DLLs, different arguments that you pass into it, just based on whatever you do. But we're going a little bit too far. Let's come back, uh, save. So make sure that you are on your launch console here. You have a breakpoint, otherwise it'll just run on its own. And then we're gonna debug it. And very, very nicely, it lands right here on our console. Then if we step over it one time, down here is our hello world and it worked. Well, that's all well and good, but let's do something kind of fun right now. And we can use a var and we'll give it an x, my variable equal to five. And we could use var, but in .NET it can, it knows what type, what type it will be. And it's telling us this is not used yet, but it will be. So I'm gonna do my var equals my var times 50, just for fun. And so if you use var, it, it knows that this is an integer because we've given it a five. You could just as well have done this, given it an int, but you'll find out later that using var is kind of fun, it's kind of easy. It actually looks better in some cases. So the reason I showed you this is so when we go to debug, I'm gonna control S out of habit, I save, I'm gonna run it, and then we can step over, we can see what's in our variable, a five. Also, you can, in Visual regular Visual Studio, you can right click on it and add to watch. And notice over here in your watch window, I've added it twice for fun, but we don't, we don't need it in there. We can come over here and type it in, my var, and it's got a five, and now you can sit here, and as you go through the cycle, as you step over it, Notice that the watch changed to 250 here, and you could have a bunch of variables and sit here and watch them. You don't have to hover over them. That's just a quick little tip. Okay, let's start working with JSON now, and you will start to learn and see how powerful it is. Okay, now we're going to have some fun, and we're going to create some objects that are common everyday objects that we use, a customer, and then we're going to turn it into JSON, and then we're going to turn it back into the object. And what's really cool about that is whenever you're interfacing with like an API, you will take an object in memory and you can serialize it into JSON. That just means turn it into JSON text, push it over the internet, call an API, push it over there, and then they might do something with it, send, send you back JSON, you take it, then you serialize it back into an object, and then you can do something with it like put it in a database. And we do this a lot, and let me show you what that means and how that works. So first of all, let's get rid of this namespace here just to clean up the code. There's no need for namespace when we have such a simple program. So down here, we're gonna create a class. And if you don't know what classes are, um, you're gonna need to know what those they are. I'm not gonna explain it yet, but we have a type of customer and it, we describe the customer as having properties of first name, last name, and address. And in C-sharp, let's get rid of this. In C-sharp, you can create a t an object, a specific customer. And you might create one here where I call customer one, his name is John Smith in Main Street. And then I might name, make, make another customer, Sally Smith, whatever, Elm Street. And so once these objects are put inside of a, an object, you can pass them around very easily. You can pass them to another function, to a database. 
whatever, and it knows it's a type customer and it knows how to handle it. It's very cool. So once we have our object, let's take a look at it down here. I'm just going to build it and do a debug. Get rid of this. Hit run. Now let's look in type of customer here and notice this customer is, it's kind of like a little package of properties. So this one customer has a first name, last name, and address. So, okay, that's simple, fine, good enough. Now let's create a string out of that and put it into JSON. And to do that, we're going to use what's called Newton Soft. It is another product, or I should call it package, Now, I, when I went to my package manager, I expected to see it down here and be able to type in Newtonsoft, but for some reason, it's not there. It's just not in the package manager. That's okay. Google to the rescue. So I went out here and I found someone that said, I Googled, let's see, how do I use Google? Add Newtonsoft to v VS Code. The very first thing that came up showed me exactly how to do it. So we're going to type in .NET add package Newtonsoft.json, and I've already tested this and it works. So there it is, .NET add package newtonsoft.json. And it's going to add that package the same way as any way else. We just happen to have done it from the command line. A little bit more cryptic, but I shouldn't have done exit there. Now let's see if it's over here under packages. I don't see it, but it's installed. Well, it's actually, actually I know why it's not there. It's not an extension. Sorry about that. That is not an extension. It's a part of your project and it installs files somewhere I'm not sure where they are but it installs files inside of your project it's project based it's like a DLL it's not extension based sorry about that and here it is Newton soft and now we can start to use it in our project so we have to add a reference to it at the top using Newton soft and now it will find it and recognize it so what we're going to do is take that very object up here described. Normally you would have a class in another file and it wouldn't be here. You usually put your cl classes in their own files, but I have it, happen to have it right here, which you don't have to put it in a, new, in a different file. So we're going to take this and put, make a JSON string out of it and it will just work automatically. And it is so cool that we can do it with, let's just say string JSON equal to Newtonsoft.json.json convert dot serialize object and then we pass in our customer object and Newtonsoft.json this is json.formatting dot indented now that might look really long but what you can do is come up here and do this, you can do a using newtonsoft.json. And then you don't need to add all this stuff. It's already referenced up, up above. And it should work the same. So that looks a little better. We're gonna put, so this is saying put into this string, serialize this object, thank you JSON, convert, really awesome tool. Put that in the string and let's write it to the console. Console dot right line json we're going to get that in the form of a string that looked like our configuration that we were talking about earlier so let's run it to here debug run now down here it is and i'm going to put it in notepad now we could have very easily written that to a file put it in a we could have Here's what this would look like when you serialize it to text. So you see what we did? We took a, an object in memory and we put it into text. And imagine doing this for thousands of customers and sending them over the internet for someone else to do something with them and take that and put it in their database. You see how powerful that is? If you don't see it yet, you will someday. Now let's take that exact same thing and reverse it. We'll take some, let's say somebody sent us this text and we're gonna turn it back into an object and do the reverse. So serializing that object, put it into text. Now we're gonna take text and put it back into an object.
So in the case of turning this text back into an object, we went the first way we went, we took an object and turned it into text. Let's take an example of that same exact, let's say we have a, a JSON file, which is just plain text. Plain text is very easy to deal with, especially in JSON. And here we have, it could be a lot more complex than this, but we picked a simple example. First name, John Smith, one main street, okay? Text file. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is declare a file name and then we, it's a lot easier to deal with if you have it in a variable. And then I'm gonna take the type of customer. So it's gonna be able to know that the type of customer is gonna know that it has a first name, last name, and address. It's gonna map, it's gonna map that same exact format. If you don't map it that way, it will cause an error. And so this is basically just gonna read the string right here we're going to deserialize the object of type customer, generic customer, into this object right here. And we're going to end up with this back in memory from text to memory. And so if we hit the debug key, we're going to run it. It's going to pop down here. And now we have it from text into memory. And here's where we can take this and put it into a database. Now, this may not seem very magical right now, but again, if you have thousands of these, if you have thousands of records that need to be passed over the internet or something, you can turn them into object, you can serialize and deserialize, go back and forth, and I do this all the time, especially with APIs that require JSON. So if I know that this API requir requires a certain type of JSON, I will take that JSON and I will, and I'll show you how I do it. Let's suppose we have an API and they say, here is the type of JSON and here is exactly how we want it formatted. You have to have first name, last, it has to be formatted like this. I'm gonna take that, just an example, just like that, and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna type in create C sharp class from JSON. And you'll go out here on the web and if you put your JSON in here, and hit convert, guess what? There's your class. That looks exactly the same. This looks exactly the same as the class we made. It just happens to have a different name. So that's how I'm gonna do make my class. So if someone gives me JSON like this, I'm gonna create a class off of it without doing any work. I'm gonna come over here and copy, paste, customer, and I'm done. And you can do the same thing in reverse. If you have a class like this, you can go out on the internet and turn it into a sample JSON. I think you can do that, but most often you'll do what I just did. You don't have to sit here and type every single thing out perfectly. If you can just get an example of the JSON like this, get an example of it, you can plug it in that program, pop it in here, you've got your class, and then you pop it in here and you can change classes from, from JSON back and forth. Anyway, guys, please like and subscribe. I hope you understand the value of this. You need to understand JSON. You need to understand XML. They're very similar. You can do the same kind of things with XML as you can with JSON. It's just JSON is so clean and neat. It's all it has is these little brackets. And if we were to look at XML, you can see how hefty that is. It's got all these stupid tags, these huge long tags, which used to be pretty awesome and magical. But now we can take that and make it look like that.